Hello and welcome guys. This is the last part of a series of ASP.NET Core Razor page tutorial and the original author of this series of tutorial is Rick Anderson, a team led by Rick Anderson uh, in the ASP.NET Core group team for the Microsoft and if you like this tutorial please put likes on the YouTube video and subscribe to it. So today we are going to good, do the validation to the ASP.NET Core Razor page that we have built so far. Mm. A key tenet of the software development is called the dry principle. So Razor pages encourage development where the functionality is specified once and it's reflected throughout the app. So dry can help reduce the amount of code in an app dry makes the code less error prone and easier to test and maintain. The validation support provided by Razor Pages and Entity Framework is a good example of the dry principle. Validation rules are declaratively specified at one place mostly in the model class and the rules are enforced everywhere in the app. So how do we do the validation? We start with the movie.cs which is open in my application. Now here we will use the data annotation. Data annotation provides a built-in set of validation attributes that are applied declaratively to a class or property. Data annotations also contain formatting attributes like data types that help with formatting and they don't provide validation. Now in this file movie class I have already updated the movie class to take advantage of several data annotation attributes like required string length display data type and regular expression as well as range. The required the required one yeah and minimum length attributes indicate that a property must have a value However, nothing prevents a user from entering white space to satisfy the validation constraint for a nullable type. So non-nullable value types such as decimal, integer, float and date time are inherently required so they don't need the required attribute. The regular expression attribute for the genre or the rating limits the characters that the users can enter. In the this code, genre must start so the genre must start with one or more capital letters and follow with zero or more letters, single or double quotes, white space characters or dashes. Similarly the rating must start with one or more capital letters and follow with zero or more letters, numbers, single or double quotes, white space characters and dashes or dashes. The range attribute constrains a value to a specified range, say 1 to 100. The string length attribute sets the minimum or the maximum length of a string and optionally the minimum length. Having validation rules automatically enforced by ASP.NET Core helps make an app more robust. Automatic validation in models help protect the app because you don't have to remember to apply them when new code is added. So validation error UI in Razor pages. So we'll run the application to see the result of our validation. I'll click the create new link and if I place an A and move over so it comes up with this validation. Similarly if we put the release date as 00, zero uh, nothing happens but if I again come back and make it Zero, 00 the release date field is required. Similarly the genre if we put a genre as A it should come 
match the regular expression which says that it should start with a capital letter. In the price field if I put a string dog it should be a number. Similarly rating requires to match this regular expression which is it should start with a capital A to Z. Now one thing has to be noticed that the form has automatically rendered a validation error message in each field containing an invalid value. The errors are enforced both client side using JavaScript and jQuery and server side when a user has JavaScript disabled. A significant benefit is that no code changes were necessary in the create or edit pages. Once data annotations were applied to the model the validation UI was enabled. The razor pages created in this tutorial automatically picked up the validation rules using validation attributes on the properties of the movie model class. Test validation using the edit page the same validation is applied. So if you test the validation using the edit page instead of the create page the same validation is applied. The form data isn't posted to the server until there are no client side validation errors. That means if I click create without clearing these validation errors it will not post to the server. Okay. Now server side validation. When JavaScript is disabled in the browser submitting the form with errors will post to the server. The test server validation can be done with disabling the JavaScript in the browser. If you can't disable JavaScript in the browser, try another browser. Or you can set a breakpoint in on post async method in the create or edit page or a submit a form with validation error. And finally we can check for this code uh, So model state. So if you put a breakpoint over here and check for the validity of model state, the model state will be invalid, is valid will be false. Now this one let me open the create.cshtml file form method post. Now this part of the code shows a portion of the create.cshtml page that we have scaffolded earlier in the tutorial. It is used by the create and edit pages to display the initial form and to redisplay the form in the event of an error. The input tag helper uses data annotation attributes and produces HTML attributes needed for jQuery validation on the client side. The validation tag helper displays validation errors. The create and edit pages have no validation rules in them. These create and edit pages they don't have any validation rules in them. The validation rules and error strings are specified only in the movie class. These validation rules are automatically applied to razor pages that edit the movie model. So because you are using the movie model here so it is using those validation rules through this movie model. When validation logic needs to change it's done only in the model. Validation is applied consistently throughout the application. The validation logic is defined in one page and validation in one place helps keep the code clean and makes it easier to maintain and update using data type attributes. Now here looking going back to the movie class we see that the system dot component model dot data annotations namespace provides formatting attributes in addition to the built-in set of validation attributes. The data type attribute is applied to release date. 
this one which is a data type dot date and price property as well so data type dot currency the data type attribute only provide hints for the view engine to format the data and supplies the attributes such as anchor element for URLs and ahref equals say mail to email address dot com for email use the regular expression attribute to validate the format of the data the data type attribute is used to specify a data type that's more specific than the database intrinsic type so data type attributes are not validation attributes in the same application only the date is displayed without time the data type enumeration provides for many data types such as date time phone number currency email address and more the data type attribute can also enable the application to automatically provide type specific features for example a mail to link can be created for data type dot email address a date selector can be provided for data type dot data data type dot date in browsers that support html5 the data type attributes emits html5 data dash attributes that HTML5 browsers consume. The data type attributes do not provide any validation. Again, data type dot date doesn't specify the format of the date that is displayed. By default, the data field is displayed according to the default formats based on the service culture info. And this column for this price here data annotation is required so entity framework core can correctly map price to currency in the database jquery validation doesn't work with range attribute and date time for example in the code the following code will always display a client side validation error even when the data date is in the specified range so the client side this code will so I'll just write the code stop the application for a second so this code will always display a client side validation error even when the date is in the specified range it is generally not a good practice to compile hard dates in your models so using range attribute and date time is discouraged right now the following code this movie class code shows combining attributes in one line if you just write it like this string length 60 minimum length equals 0 and it is required so if you just write it like that cut from here just put a comma and then write data type data type dot date and for this regular expression you can write all in the same line comma separated
all these attributes could be also combined in the same line right that's it thanks for watching